Okay, we're going to sneak back through here to these guys. This is uh, one of the most impressive Innovation Award demos I've ever seen. What you can see in the background is a, uh, a drone, but they're not going to call it a drone. It's an aerial manipulator. Um, could you guys, before we get into what we're seeing here, could you tell me who you are and what your research project is all about? So um, my name is Antonio Franchi, and I am um, a CNRS researcher in France. And I am leading this, uh, this, this group of people, which is an international group, which counts in the CNRS, the um, uh, INRIA in, uh, in France, and the uh, University of Siena in Italy, and Seoul National University in South Korea. So that's, that's quite a global audience. I mean, you guys are all over the world. It's a very, already an impressive feat to coordinate research across the planet like that. So, I mean, obviously there's people standing around watching this every time it goes in the air. It's, it's really impressive to look at. What is the research project trying to achieve? So uh, our goal is try to, to show that with an heterogeneous team composed by a ground manipulator and a flying manipulator, we can achieve much better results and uh, perform operations that are otherwise impossible with the standard ground manipulators. So I guess from what I was talking with you earlier this week, um, you know, the robot, if it has a long thing in its yeah. arms, it's got too much torque on it. So the robot can't lift that up. The drone is meant to go to the end of the long piece yes. and lift it up in coordination with the human. We see some uh, operation with the human down here. Is, is that, what, what are we looking at there? This, are you calling it telemanipulation, correct? Yes, exactly. So here we, we implement what we call the shared control. Shared control means the system has its, its own autonomy. At the same time, the human can interact whenever he, he or she wants and at the level the human decides. So the system can be either fully autonomous or fully teleoperated. And this is done in a bilateral way. It means the human operator receives also a feedback, a haptic feedback using this uh, uh, for, um, uh, force feedback device, uh, which gives a lot what, of what we call uh, situational awareness. It means the human is more involved and knows better what's going on on the, on the robotic side. And uh, I mean, a lot of people say, cool, but why? What's the application? So the application, they are, they, we, we cannot see them now, but in the future, we can think, for example, to having these kind of systems uh, composed even by more than just one uh, aerial manipulator and uh, ground robot. For example, employed in uh, search and rescue scenarios after disasters, when you have a collapsed building or, uh, and you want to, for example, remove debris that are inaccessible by, by, by ground or uh, too dangerous to access by ground, you can use the cooperation of uh, aerial manipulators. But we can even envisage in an application in the future, um, in, inside the factories of the futures, to do a logistic cooperation and also uh, the future of construction of, of buildings, tall buildings or tall structures like bridges and so on and so forth. So the applications are really uh, just uh, up to our imagination. Well, there you have it, guys.